Come on, y'all go that way, 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 that way. Urban nerds. Understand something. Now we here at Temple University, right? Any of y'all ever been here before? No. You been inside Temple? Yeah. Where were you? Um, I think like the like the over there, over the hall where all the where all the yeah, stores like and stuff is. is. Uh huh. You know, most you know most <coughs> black kids. <clears throat> here in Philadelphia, if you have Temple University, you have Drexel University, you have um, um, Penn University of Penn, you have St. Joe's, you have all these different universities. Most black kids that come from where we come from have never seen the inside of those colleges. You'll drive by, mm -hmm. you'll walk by. Some of y'all even never even walk through the courtyards. Mm -hmm. You'll never see the inside. You know, so <clears throat> your idea of success is very limited. The bar set for young black boys your age, where we come from, is very low. The expectations is very low. Because a lot of times when we're, when we're being raised up, we're not taught to have high standards for ourselves. So I bring you guys to, these, to this university for you to start thinking different. I want you to see different people. Mm -hmm. When you go home and you lay down at night, I want you to start thinking different. I want to change your mindset so that way you can, be, you can start to uh, transform and become, to become the best version of yourself. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't have nobody bring me to no colleges. I rolled past, like we used to go, you know, to be honest, we used to go to the uni, down to the college just to rob the students. <coughs> if, if I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of the Most High, I'm here now, alive, changed my life, gave my life to God, and I'm able to come back here and teach you kids so y'all can be without, what y'all can be the best version of yourself and, and try to be what I, I, it took me a long time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I had to go through a lot of heartache and pain. And when he was born, <clears throat> I knew I had to really change my life. Mm -hmm. And now I want to pour it back into you guys and give you guys um, all the advantages that you can get that I, that, I, that people gave probably gave me the advantage, Billy, but I wasn't mm -hmm. listening. Oh, absolutely. Because <clears throat> it wasn't like it wasn't people there that was, you know, trying. I wasn't listening. I was hard-headed. I was hard-headed. So like you were one of them kids. That was like you ain't like people telling you nothing, because that's like me. I don't like when people tell me. Something. I grew up well. I grew up in the crack era. The tell them what era. scared you to make you want to change. What scared me to make me want to change was going to jail for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. See, you think you're big and bad until you get in jail, and not just being in jail and being scared of people. Just when you get in there and you look at that wall, you like, man, I can't leave. Mm -hmm. There's no key to like. You can't just get up. Hey, 7.30 is the game. No, you want a phone call. You got to hope that your girl answer the phone, but she don't answer the phone. And, like, you know, if your mama died while you're in jail, nobody cares. Imagine you just had to sit in there for the rest of your life on a, on a little mattress in a steel, like a steel bed with a mattress about an inch thick. You had to lay on something like that for the rest of your life. A room about the third of this side, you sharing it with somebody else. When you go to the bathroom, if you got to take a, a poop, your cellie is in there, right there, and there with you. There's nowhere to go. The room is like the half of this table, mm -hmm. and you stuck in there, and you in that something like that for the rest of your life. I said, no, nah, this ain't the way. But when I got to prison, there was a man named Zachary Ricketts from the Nation of Islam that was there, and he talked to me. And he told me that I wasn't a nigga. And I didn't know what he was talking about. Like, what do you mean? And he started to explain to me uh, the traps that we was caught up in. And Start, uh, he, what, what he did was he started to make me see myself and see the shame in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had to, and I didn't change right away, but what, you, you can't unlearn what you learn. Once he deposited some stuff into me, I took it out to the street with me. And over time, I began to change. When I see you guys, <clears throat> you guys are not coming up the way that I came up, Billy came up. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little different. By the time I was your age, I had already had a Volvo, my own house, uh, you know, all kinds of girls and cars and money. I was already fully indoctrinated into that street life. And it was hard. We, we're we urban nerds. We're in a prevention business. We want to, I want to grab you guys before the streets get you, before you get that street indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Because once you get that, some of those kids, some of them kids got to die. They got to go to prison for long sentences. And those that really got to hear to hear to listen, I, I can get them. I want to get 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 to you guys before 
and get that far. Mm -hmm. Before it get that far. And, 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 and take you to different places. You know, urban nurse, we want to go to Africa. We want to go to London. We want to go to France. There's a big world out here outside of Philadelphia in the block. I mean, a big world. Mm -hmm. And guess what? There's a big world right here in Philadelphia that you guys, that you guys, most a lot of you kids would never be exposed to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right there in front of you. But I, I, I didn't see the big world until, I, until, I, until my eyes was changed, my vision was changed something different. And when I stepped out, Billy, I said, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know this was out here. Mm -hmm. Even though we was going to rob these dudes and doing all kinds of stuff, and I was selling all kinds of drugs, making money. <laughs> it wasn't until I got away from that and went into it. And I looked around and I said, man, I didn't know all this kind of stuff was this. And I didn't know that this stuff was for me because I ended with this. In our communities, a lot of us have low self-esteem as black boys. We're raised in the communities that we come from, and we don't think that we're worthy of being, being going to different places and being at these places where these other people are. We don't think that way. And I'm just going to go ahead. Can I ask like a real personal, you don't got to answer if you want to, but like a real personal mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. How many people you had to lose to like realize I got to really change my life? Oh, man. Um, I think when you're losing people when you're young, at that time, you, you don't, you don't, you become numb. You don't understand it. Or you lose people, and then you think you got to go back and get those people. Right. Like, can I ask that? Like, me, I lost, you know, I lost my best friend. Mm -hmm. And me, I was never really into it like that, mm -hmm. but I was sad, yes, but I just wouldn't answer that question. Well, uh, yeah, well, see, I tried my best to raise you separate from the life I lived and your brother lived. Separate. Like, you never seen a dead body in the street, you never seen a shootout. You know, and people, when we come from, they hear that say, oh my God, oh man, you a swear. Good. Uh, mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Great. I want to save you from, from the PTSD and the trauma. I want you to be a normal, goofy, 15-year-old kid like, 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 every, like everybody else kids should be. Remember, y'all listen to that music? A lot of the, a lot of the, I don't say their name, but a lot of certain groups, they invite those rappers out to their, their parties, their bar mitzvahs, and they come out and they rap all gang, gang, kill right in front of them. But you know what? You know what their kids are doing? They're becoming the producers, mm -hmm. the A and R's, the engineers, the CEOs. While you're rapping the music, that's actually you're getting death from it. You're dying, going to prison. They're the bankers. They're everything. So they're actually controlling, and part and because of that, there's a low self esteem. We don't think that we're capable of doing these things. So urban nerds, we're here to change all that. All that you're capable of being a banker. You're capable of being an A&R. You're capable of being an engineer. You know? You're capable of owning a building that people are going to operate in. Yes, you can do it. You're capable of doing all those things. You're greater than what they said that, than what they said that you were. And we got to get, we have to teach our boys because to be a drug dealer to kill your own people and to run around as a real nigga is really low self-esteem. Menace. You know, it teaches, it's a menace and it's low self-esteem. Because you look at the other groups that's not doing it, and you, you you don't think that you're capable of doing it. And I'm here to tell you that you guys are more than capable. So you'd be surprised at the things you can do when you're exposed to different things. Mm -hmm. All right, we did. You want to say something? Nah. <laughs> just find the greatness in you guys. You kings. You just gotta. really great you, you see the urban nerds my nephew has the global unity because they're not going to let anybody get in front of them or try to stop them they're going to keep going mm -hmm. you feel me me and him me and your dad oh man we've been through a lot of like you've seen a lot of things in life that it make you like make you want to vomit it'll, 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 it'll eat at you while you're sleeping mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it was a certain situation that we was together and seeing something that it really changed my life. Like seeing somebody laying there lifeless, you know? And that like really changed me from being out here in the streets, going in bars and stuff. And I really don't, I really didn't drink because I had to break the chain because my dad, my uncles used to be alcoholics. So, I stopped that. I had to break the chain because if you don't break the chain, it's going to keep continuing on and on 
and all it's going to do is just go down the family line unless you stop it. Generational curse. Exactly. So, you know, just uh, I got a question. Um, how do you how do you break a kid away from all that if they've already if they already seen it? They've seen people die, get robbed, shootouts. What do you do when those kids have already seen that and you're trying to bring them away from that? Well, do what George is doing. Keep them close. Show them love. There's another side. There's two, there's two sides to the coin. Two worlds. There's another world. Expose you to another world. You asked an interesting question. You got me thinking. You asked your dad, what was it that changed him? And I had to ask myself that same question. What was it that changed me? And I got to say, it's close to home. It was the disappointment and the hurt that I brought to my mom. Oh, man. To and, my mom. And that was to my dad. When the feds came to get me, they came <clears throat> to get me at my mom's house. And they pulled a gun out of my mom's and told her to shut up and sit down in her house. I brought that drama to my mom's. And that was, at that point, it saved me up and sobered me up because she didn't deserve that. And I had no right to bring that into her world because she's given me, like, no different than all your moms. Ain't showing y'all nothing but love and major sacrifices. Yep. That's what I need to turn me around. It took a while. I ended up going to federal penitentiary. I wouldn't let her come see me. No, moms, you can't come up here and see me. I put myself in this place. I will get myself out. I'll call you the last Sunday of every month. And the money that I have from the street, the hustling money, that's your money. Do what you need to do with it. It was the drama that I brought to my mom in her house that she had. I had no right to do. That's what saved me up and so with me up. It's been 30 Shucks, 37 years since I walked out of federal detention and have not looked back. I've been blessed to be able to do a whole bunch of things. I ain't went for nothing. I got money to do whatever I want to do. You know, I live in this old boule house with, with a big old backyard and pool table and all the other <laughs> stuff. I've been fortunate and blessed because I focus, I stay focused. I'm going to leave you with this. I want you guys to think. Just take a second, just take one second before you make any decision and think about the decision that you made. And most of the times you will make the right decision, but just pause and think about the decision that you make and then make the right decision. Are we going to slip and fall and bump our heads? Absolutely. But the thing about you guys, Urban Nerds, and George tell me, we stand back up. We bump our heads, we stand back up. And there's loving hands like these brothers here and like me that you've seen some th stuff, you've been through some things, but you ours. You, you're the future. We depend on you guys. Yep. You're the ones who are going to take care of us. <laughs> depend on you. I got a question for like all three of you. So, all right, I'm going to put this. Uh, all right, so, say, so let's say if <clears throat> a kid, like his age, mm -hmm. live with his mom, and just his mom, and mm -hmm. his mom can't pay the bills, they can't do nothing. How do you stop that kid from, like, turning into the streets? How do you, how do you really stop that kid from, like, Turning to start scamming. What we doing now? Killing. You know what I mean? What you, what's happening right now? What we doing right snatch now? Snatch him up. Come on, we're going to snatch you up. I'm coming to get you. I'm going to show you some different things. Hey, here's my phone number. If you stressed out, you're going through something, call me. As a matter of fact, you ain't got a place to stay. I got a room for you. Yep. Remember what sometimes, I said? Wait. Sometimes yeah. at home, it's hard. I mean, moms mm -hmm. is going through stuff. We ain't perfect human beings. Yeah. But it's men like this that, hey, look. No, I'm here for you because you're going to grow up and be a man. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna run families. Mm -hmm. It's real important. Two sides to every coin. Just take a minute yeah. and think about what you're about to do. You make the right decisions most of the time. We're in the prevention business. That's why I said that kid that's growing up in a house without his dad in the house, there may not be no food. We have to take him and expose him to different things so he, his thought process can be different. A lot of times our decisions, when they say, um, you know, you got a choice, I don't always believe in that. It depends. That's subjective. Because a lot of times when you got young kids with, uh, with underdeveloped brains, you make choices based off of your circumstances and your environment. And I understand that. There's a lot of kids doing life in prison because of their environment and their circumstances. They never had a chance. Nobody never came or set up provisions or got them out of those where they could have made better decisions. So because of that, Urban Nerds is the prevention business. I understand. So when you see on the news, they always show black faces. And most of these kids, they be young kids. And they make you guys believe that you are N-word, believe that you are a criminal. A lot of these kids could have been engineers. They could be everything. So we want to change the, the circumstances to get better outcomes. Mm -hmm. 
That's what we want to do. All right, so y'all ready to go the, 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 uh, to check out the game? Yeah. Y'all ready for some basketball? Play some basketball. Let's go, let's go.